Hello kids, Patrick Livingston of easyanimalstodraw.com and today we're going to be drawing this animal. The pit bull. There are a few bull terriers who can be called pit bulls. Pit bulls is the name used for bull terriers that were used to fight in pits, a sport back in the 18th century. So we start off by drawing the circle for the hips, drawing it in lightly. Larger circle for the shoulders, the muscular shoulders and chest of a pit bull. But of course it's a very long time since these dogs have been used as fighting dogs. When fighting, when dog fighting, dog fights were outlawed, they became uh, they became fashionable dogs for gentlemen, and uh, the breeders went about changing their their character to make them more more docile, more more affectionate. So now we have our two circles for the body, and now we'll add the circle for the head. Once we've drawn that in, we'll draw two further. We'll subdivide the circle for the head into quarters, which will act as a guide for the eyes and the nose and the muzzle. Originally it was bred to fight bulls as a sport. As a bulldog. But then when that became illegal, they and the sport of dog fighting took its place. They crossed the bull, the bulldogs with, with terriers to create the bull terrier. And because they were fighting in pits, they, they all became known as pit bulls. So we have the guide for the tail now, and now the, the guide for the rear leg. As you can see, I've joined up the, the circles for the body and the head. Just finishing off the drawing guide for the legs. As you can see the bull terrier has quite a wide chest, noticeable by how far apart the guides for the front legs are. That's our drawing guide done. Time for the drawing itself. Starting with the ears inside the Roughly triangular shaped guide for the ears. Adding the detail of the inner ear. Now the eyes, and this is where you can see the, the line bisecting the, the circle for the head comes in useful. And as usual, we draw in the, the dark pupil and shade in the iris. Now for the nose. And 
the mouth. Looks a little comical at this stage with a circle for the head. Using the circle as a guide, we draw in the actual shape of the head. And again, the, the ear and the detail of the inner ear. Very smooth haired. The bull terriers. Uh, looking a little bit more like a bull terrier now. So now that strong muscular chest, broad muscular chest. Just evening up the both sides of the, the muzzle. So I noticed that I'd drawn one side in a little bit lower than the other. Never be afraid to, to rub out and redraw any area that, that where you feel you've made a mistake. And the sooner you do it, the better in drawing. It's always easier to correct things at the beginning than at the end. Perfectly normal to make mistakes in your drawings. Sometimes it's not so easy to see the exact place to to draw, to make a mark until you've actually made it, and then you can look and go, ah, now that's a little bit too high, too low, too long, too short. So the first first four leg. The one nearest to us. It was in the mid eighteen hundreds that the suddenly unemployed bull terrier when dog fighting became illegal. Suddenly an unemployed bull terrier became fashionable among young gentlemen in the mid-1800s. A little line from poem goes, Hinks found a bull terrier, a battered old bum, and made him a dog or a gentleman's chum. And it was in the early 1860s that the Englishman James Hink took the old fighting breed, a bull terrier cross, called a bull and terrier, and refined and standardised it as the modern bull terrier. Hinks's dogs were white, but by the early 20th century, coloured specimens were seen. He came to America in 1885. So, back to the drawing. Putting in the belly to chest line and now the, the rear hind quarters. Rather straight, stretched out hind leg. the second leg and now the, the paw, the rear paw. I 
I've made the I've made it a little too low there. So changing the shape slightly. Now the nearest hind paw. And the tail. Comparatively short, short tail. And now the fun bit, removing the, the scaffolding, the structure of the drawing guide to reveal the dog by itself. My favourite bit. Something a bit magical about this. And as usual, removing the drawing guide will remove part of the drawing. That's inevitable. No way around that. But there will be a trace of the drawing still there, so it's quite easy to go back in and redraw it, make it stronger. Before you get to the shading stage. You don't have to shade your, draw your dog, you can leave it with just the drawing if you like. As you can see, there's quite a few bits of the drawing missing. But there, you can see there's, there's a faint line still there, mostly. And it's, even if there wasn't, it would still be fairly easy to, to redraw, given that we've got the rest of the animal there. And that looks like it's about it. Apart from a few details from the of the ears that, that went went missing. And time now for the shading. Now I'm using the, the finer of the two pencils because I'm only going to be because it's a it's a it's a white dog and smooth haired. There's not going to be the shading is going to be fairly light. It's just going to suggest the, the muscles of the dog. And to get that pale, soft line, you need to hold your pencil quite softly. And it, If you hold it softly, you can feel the pressure. You can, it's easier to feel the pressure of the, the tip of the pencil against the paper and to keep that soft. And that way you get a soft, delicate, pale, pale mark. 
Now the, no the nose of a dog is often a little bit shiny, and so even though it's generally the same color all over, leave a little pale part at the tip to give an indication that it's a little bit shiny. Certainly compared to the rest of the coat. You can see how far away from the tip I'm holding the pencil. It's about as far away as I can hold it. And that that allows me to have a, well, that pale grey shading that I've just done. That allows me to have a very, very soft touch, very soft feel to, to the See again, I'm holding the, the pencil further away when I want to draw a very pale, make a very pale mark. A playful dog, the Bull Terrier. Endearing and sometimes stubborn, but always devoted and particularly good with children. Very affectionate, very fond of exercise. It's ironic that some of the friendliest breeds of dogs began their careers ferocious gladiators when blood sports were the thing. That amused people before people had television and YouTube. Fortunately, we live in more civilized times. And to get the various, to get a feel for shading, you might find it more relaxing to practice on a piece of blank paper, to practice getting different strengths of shading. Obviously making darker marks is fairly easy because it's easier to control pressing hard. It's not so difficult to do that. It's a little bit trickier to to draw with a very delicate light touch. You might want to practice that a little bit on a blank sheet of paper until you get the hang of it. Now, as usual, this area under the dog's body is a fairly dark area, even if it's a pale dog, because it's pretty much in full shadow from the dog. The upper inside of the hind leg. If you'd like a 
to download a PDF file with the drawing guide, which you can print out. You can get it at easyanimalstodraw.com slash pitbull. And you'll also find lots of other videos there of other dogs and other animals. You can see I've indicated the ribs, the side of the chest a little, and muscles around the, the wide, strong chest of the dog. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Smash the bell to get notifications for further videos. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'm just refining some areas a little. And there we have it. One pit bull. So until next time, happy drawing.